All right, now let's look at verses 6 through 9. So I'm going to read all four verses and explain them. All right, this is where it's going to get some interesting stuff right here. <clears throat> Even as Abraham believed God. So Paul's using Abraham as an example. He believed God, and it was what? Accounted to him for righteousness. He automatically got righteousness. So the Jews keep saying, Abraham is our father. Abraham is our father, right? Well, you point them out this. You can point out to a Jew. Well, notice right here how Abraham was accounted for righteousness for salvation. It was by believing, not by works. There was no works involved. This matches where the Bible talks about Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness at the book of Genesis. When you read back at the book of Genesis, what you're going to find out is that God told Abraham, look at the stars that are up in heaven, so shall thy seed be. And then the Bible says that Abraham believed in it, and what, hit, what did the verse say? God counted to him for righteousness. That's the Old Testament, beginning of Genesis. See, so the very first book in the Bible, if the Jews actually looked at it, they would see that this kind of doctrine was not made up by Paul or later Christians. There were glimpses and gems of that found at the Old Testament where the Lord was predicting you something, what's going to happen. There was no doubt about it. Look at verse 7. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith. Okay, so know that if you are in the faith category. Are you in the faith category? Okay, you're saved by faith. Then what are you automatically? The same are the children of Abraham. You are Abraham's children. You might say, uh, I don't get it. Why? It's simple. The reason why you are Abraham's children is because the way Abraham was accounted for righteousness, by faith. So the context is by faith here. So Paul's not talking about, obviously, a literal ethnicity in this passage. So I know that the Jews are a literal ethnicity from Abraham's seed. But what Paul's pointing out right here is that, hey, the thing is, is that if you're going to be the children of Abraham... You may be by race and blood, but you definitely are not by faith. By the context of faith, the Jews rejected it. They choose the law. So because of that, they are not counted as Abraham's children. That, why do you think Paul said, why do you think Jesus, excuse me, Jesus said to the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the Jews that you are not Abraham's children, even though ethnicity-wise they are? Just because you're... Jesus said at John chapter 8, I know that you're Abraham's children, but you are not Abraham's children because if you believed in me, you would have believed Abraham. Why did he say that? Because he's talking about right here children of Abraham concerning a spiritual context, not a physical context right here, not a physical race, literal ethnicity. It's by a spiritual context here. So it's important to understand that the Jews are not spiritually the children of Abraham. Unless they get into the category of faith, then they can be the children of Abraham. You might say, why, why are they not the children of Abraham spiritually, Pastor? Because Abraham, how did he get spiritually accounted for righteousness for salvation? Faith. Did the Jews do that? No. So they're not joining with him on that. Okay, let's keep reading right here. And the scripture foreseeing. Wow, how about that? So Amen. notice right Amen. here that the Bible, it predicts for you. Yes, sir. It foresees. Yeah. It predicts. That shows that this book is alive. Yes, sir. Now, the Bible is not something that we treat as an idol and then, you know, we bow down and kiss its pages or something like that. But you got to realize this. That book is so closely assimilated with God that Jesus, his name is called the Word. Amen. So the Bible may not be God himself, but I'll tell you something, it's very close to him. Yes, sir. It's very close to him. So you got to be careful of that. And the scripture foreseeing, what does it foresee? What does it look ahead of time? That God would justify the heathen through faith. So God's going to one day justify the heathen, non-Jews, Gentiles, through faith. Salvation by faith. Preach before the gospel unto Abraham. Look at that. So Abraham did hear some form of the gospel back then, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. Okay, how is that the gospel, pastor, that when God said, all nations will be blessed uh, if you believe in it, Abraham? Because the gospel here, the context notice is faith. 
This has nothing to do with Jesus died, buried, and resurrected. Even though God didn't say that to Abraham, Paul was not focusing on that. Paul was focusing on the gospel. Faith, faith, faith. That's what he's focusing on right here. Faith. So it has to do with faith right here. That's why when God told him, in these shall all nations be blessed, Abraham, what? He believed it. That was faith. So because of that, that's why God counted to him for righteousness, for salvation. So Abraham did hear some form of the gospel like we did. But the gospel basically was actually not like ours. Even though it's not like ours, there's no death, burial, and resurrection, the context is what again? Faith. faith. See, that's the key. That's the similarity. So then they which be of faith, okay, are you of faith? Are blessed with faithful at Abraham. So you join in the blessing with Abraham. So where Abraham is blessed, you join in his blessings. So these are powerful passages that you can use to Jews. Where Jews might say, well, this thing is made up by Jesus or by the apostles. No, you point them out Old Testament passages where then how, do you, how was Abraham accounted for righteousness for salvation? By faith. And you don't see any works involved right over there. Now, this deals with Judaism. We deal with Judaism successfully right here. So Galatians chapter 3 verses 6 through 9 is a perfect passage that debunks Judaism. Now, here's another extreme, however. However, replacement theology, which a lot of Calvinists adhere to, as well as people who do not believe in dispensational salvations, this is their passage they're going to use to debunk dispensationalism or dispensational salvation in general. So let's put right here, I will call this covenant of grace. There's a false doctrine called covenant of grace. You might say, what is covenant of grace, pastor? Covenant of grace, what it does is that it teaches that God's grace, ever since after the fall of man, God gave that same salvation by grace to everybody from beginning to the end of the millennium. So obviously we don't believe in that. That is a Calvinist teaching. That is a Calvinist teaching. So it is from one of their doctrines. You got to understand this. Bible-believing Christians, we believe Calvinism is heresy. Amen. So we don't believe in this doctrine. We believe that, there, that this grace is not the same salvation by grace from beginning to end. We believe that salvation, there were different salvation plans. There were different salvation plans. Not all of them are the same. There's a clever saying. Well, you know, they may have different methods of receiving God's grace, but it was all the same grace. That's what some people will teach who are against dispensational salvation. But guess who teaches that too? Calvinist. Yeah. Covenant of grace specifically teaches that. So I, I really don't believe in this doctrine. Galatians 3, 6 through 9 actually does not support covenant of grace. So you might say, well, pastor, but you mentioned right here that Abraham... He, would, he heard the gospel and saved the same way as we are. No, there's a problem right here. No, there's a couple problems right here. First of all, there's one possibility. In verse 8, there's a possibility that to Abraham, he did not hear the gospel in Galatians 3.8. That's not what it's saying. It might be the opposite. You might say, why? Well, let me read right here for you. Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, Preach, notice what? Before the gospel unto Abraham. So in other words, before the gospel of Jesus Christ, because obviously we can't receive the gospel of Jesus Christ until he actually died, buried, and resurrected, right? Yeah. How do you get saved by the blood of Jesus if Jesus did not shed his blood yet, right? Yeah. So obviously this will be after this. So before the gospel, Abraham heard the promise, in thee shall all nations be blessed. So you got to think about that possibility. So that's actually the opposite. That's actually the opposite. But here's another problem right here. If you look at right here, preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, what is the gospel to Abraham? Believing that Jesus died, buried, and resurrected. No, saying in thee shall all nations be blessed. Yeah. Is, that your, is that how you got saved, friend? No. <laughs> Imagine going door to door. In you, all nations be blessed. Oh, yeah, I go for that. I, I get saved. 
So the thing is this, is that obviously that's totally different. Paul was focusing concerning if he is talking about Abraham having a similar gospel like we are, his only focus had nothing to do with this one. It had to do with what again, remember? Faith. That was the key Paul was focusing on, faith. But here's another boo-boo you're going to have to come across. Look at verse 8, the scripture foreseeing. That's future, right? Yeah. Future what? That God would justify the heathen through faith. What? So in other words, well, back then in the Old Testament time, good. there was no justification by faith. Yeah, that's good. That's proof that the salvation by faith is after Old Testament. It's not the same. Because let's use some common sense here. Obviously, you can't have faith in Jesus Christ for salvation if he did not die, bury, and raise himself from the dead. So that's just common sense. So then, what is Paul pointing out then right here about Abraham being accounted for righteousness, him hearing some form of the gospel? Here's the idea right here. So Abraham, uh, yeah, I'm running out of space right here, so let me do this and then we'll call it a day. Because Calvinists are not important, I'll erase the Calvinists right here. Amen. Okay, so here's the idea. So Abraham, right? And then let's put right here salvation. Now let's put uh, Christian. Now look at this. In salvation, here's something very important to understand. People think that when you get salvation, it's like a one-time, instant, one thing. That's not how it works. You got to realize this, that for salvation, there are many different pieces within it. You might say, what are you talking about, Pastor? Didn't you know there's a process of justification, yeah. imputation or accounted for righteousness? There was sanctification. There was, um, just, uh, let's see, I see justification, redemption. There's ransom. And I have a basic doctrine teaching on that called results of salvation. I think I taught you that before, results of salvation. Look that up. You got to realize this. When you receive salvation, there are so many processes that happen for a saved Christian all at once. That's the blessing. Do you know why? Because Jesus' sacrifice was so powerful that he can get all those processes working at once. But other people didn't have that. Because think about it. In the Old Testament, didn't the Holy Spirit come and go? Yeah. Didn't the Holy Spirit leave some people? Yeah. yeah. Why is that? Because they had to have all different processes for their salvation. Whereas for us, all the processes happened at once as salvation. We got the Holy Spirit in us by faith. We got justified by faith. We got redemption by faith. All of this by faith at once. Now, here's something important to understand. Abraham, it said, it didn't just say saved here. What did it say? Accounted to him for righteousness. Accounted righteousness. Now, look at Romans chapter 5, please. Romans chapter 5. And then also look at Galatians, I mean, not Galatians, James chapter 2. The favorite passage for works. Look at James chapter 2. Okay, so here's Abraham. And then here's a Christian. So we're both accounted for righteousness. Oh, that means saved. No, that's not all there is to it. You forgot all the other terms. Justified, redemption, ransom, etc. All within salvation. So I'm only going to cover two terms here. That way it can be easy. That way you can see this. You ready for this? Justified. Look at this one. Justified. See that? Now look at this. Accounted for righteousness and justified equals salvation for Abraham. Christian, accounted for righteousness and justified equals salvation, right? Okay. Christians, how did we get accounted for righteousness? Was it by works or faith? Faith, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, Abraham... Galatians is not lying. Paul's not lying. Abraham was accounted righteousness by faith, not works. Correct? Correct. We saw that. Look at right here, though. Look at Romans chapter 5, verse 1. 
Therefore, being justified by what? Faith, we have peace. Look at chapter 4, verse 24. So notice imputation of righteousness or accounted for righteousness is the same time as justification. Verse 24. But for us also to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord. There's your imputed for righteousness, right? Uh, by the way, that matches with mm, Romans chapter 4, verse 3. Abraham believed God accounted to him for righteousness. See, imputed. Look at verse 6, Romans 4, 6. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works, right? Okay, so imputed righteousness or accounted righteousness. I'll put imputed, accounted. They're the same thing. We saw those verses that show it. Imputed or accounted righteousness by faith. The Bible also says, if you keep reading Romans 4, 24 was imputed righteousness. 25 was justification, right? Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Faith. Look at James chapter 2 now. Why do you think James said it's not faith alone, but there were works? Because he was very well familiar Abraham had faith, no works, when accounted for righteousness. But to attain salvation completed, he knew that his justification was works. That's why we teach in the Old Testament salvation is faith and works. Christian salvation is faith and not works. See that? So let's look at James chapter 2. James chapter 2. Now things are making sense. Look at what James said. This makes a lot of sense. Look at James chapter 2, verse 21. Was not Abraham our father? Did it say imputed righteousness or justified? Justified by works. When he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar. When he offered Isaac as a sacrifice. Remember when he was accounted righteousness without works. Was that when he offered his son Isaac as a sacrifice? Or was it when he believed in the stars? See that was many years ago. That was many years ago before Isaac was born. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was what? Faith made perfect. See, Abraham already had faith, yeah. but God later on had to put works in him that would perfect that faith. Doesn't that make sense? Because look at this. Look at verse 23. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, look at this. Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for what? Ah, see, so James recognized that, that when he believed, he was imputed righteousness. But look at the second part, and, oh, so it's not, it's not just that, and he was called the what? Friend of God. That's different from Paul's writing. So he had to be God's friend too. How did he become God's friend? Verse 24, ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith what? Only. See, James recognized that. It's not to misunderstand that Abraham was saved only by faith. No, he realized that it was faith and works. So Paul was lying then. No, Paul wasn't lying. What was he focusing on? Accounted righteousness for salvation. That's what Paul was focusing on. Notice Abraham was accounted righteousness for salvation by faith. That's what Paul was focusing on. See, the Jews would not even think about that. Jews today, when they think about when they're being accounted for righteousness, they're going to think it's works. So this is a great verse still to debunk Judaism. Paul, during his days, it was a great verse to debunk the Jews that, hey, to be accounted righteousness for salvation, it was faith, not by works. So that's what you got to understand. That's why it makes perfect sense. Now everything is becoming so clear. That's why the Old Testament, you see glimpses of Christian doctrine in there. Glimpses of salvation by grace in there. But it's not complete. It's not full until after the death of Jesus Christ. Until after the death of Jesus Christ, when Paul started to preach, then every, everyone's going, oh, then that makes sense why God did that at the Old Testament. That's why Abraham got saved that way. That's why God did it that way. That's why it makes sense. 
I keep quoting 1 Peter 1. That's the greatest verse to show you. 1 Peter 1 told you this. The Old Testament, they were trying to search diligently about this salvation by grace. But it was not revealed to them. It was revealed to us. So that's why Paul, he was taking out glimpses, see, in the Old Testament to prove it to us. So it doesn't deny dispensational salvations, Galatians chapter 2. By the way, what's very interesting right here is that verse 8, Galatians 3, 8, it told you this. Paul told you, Paul even told you this. Paul admitted Abraham was accounted righteousness by faith for salvation, but didn't he point out that justified by faith was later on in the future? At Galatians 3, 8, read it. Do you read that? Foreseeing, justify the heathen through faith. Sometime in the future, I'm going to Rescue a bunch of heathen through faith, this world by faith. See? So even Paul admitted that. See, Paul even recognized the distinction. That this justifying by faith could not come until later on through the Christian. How about that? So he recognized the difference too. So they all harmonize together. It's not a contradiction. So this is a perfect passage that debunks two extreme sides right here. Judaism as well as covenant of grace. 